As fly tires, I'm convinced that it's important we understand the nature of the materials that we tie with. If we do, our end products are bound to be better than if we didn't. I have just a standard little feather here taken off of a Whiting Farms Coq de Leon saddle. It's a beautiful feather and lovely markings and so forth, but what I want you to notice is that there are two major sections. There's a pinaceous section that has barbs. By the way, these are not fibers. They're not barbels. I've heard them referred to as barbels before. Those grow on catfish. But these are not fibers. They're barbs. And they grow off of this rachis, this shaft, at a perpendicular angle to the blade of the shaft. That rachis or shaft is this sort of a shape. Once you get down into the plumulaceous section of the feather, the shape of the, of the rachis changes. It's more flat this direction with the barbs coming off in that fashion. These barbs tend to have no barbules on them, where that there's barbules like crazy, the little fuzzy stuff coming off of these barbs. On the back of this feather, we have a little after shaft or after feather that's useful. For instance, Jack Gartside had a pattern he tied called the sparrow that he used that winding it on as a collar. Where's the quill? Well, the quill of this feather is right there. That's the quill. That's the only quill. This shaft is not a quill. It's a rachis. These barbs are not quills. They're barbs. We need to know the anatomy and call them in similar terms so that we're talking the same terms, in my humble opinion. If you have an understanding, again, of the nature of how these things function, I think you'll tie a better fly.